Hallelujah. Amen. Are you glad you came to church? Tonight I want to assure you that you not leave this place the same. Hallelujah. I want us to put our hands together and welcome Keziah. Hallelujah. part of this service. Hallelujah. And I want you to rise to your feet and with a clap offering, let's welcome Pastor Joshua. Nya 
mkakati yetu niambri babatika tata tia kegeto loza aniakamri babatia ndolo bosi ya tata mkakani ana no mosi rimbala mayambe lebe sanka kiada sanka kieto to nimpa pipata tieto amia nyanka nyano onyana riala na maanya kakite atia aria biobobo nyanka nyebrobo tata rikale atia kolosa tata anga ngano ngomunya na na mana wala Ayele bonya nana 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 nyonga gala die de kusa Ramaliana ne mosa lift your hands and cry out in the spirit Ramaliana no mo nyanga oh god my father oh god my father oh god my father in heaven adia kale de adia mo ramalie bonya nana ninke ke che ka ta 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 inche ta la bonyo mo sa ta bribuso Edia ba 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 ba. Oh God, my only Father in heaven. Who have I in heaven but you? Who have I in heaven but you? Makali edele. You mono bro. Ba bri ba da ba sa ta da ba da ba da ba. Father, I thank you for your sweet spirit. Let the veil be taken away, Lord. Speak to us. Change us. Change us by your word. Have mercy on us. I pray for your presence. I beg for your presence one more time, Lord. Touch us and speak to us. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on your people, Lord. Have mercy on your priests, oh God. Have mercy on your flock, oh God. Guide us by your word. In Jesus name I pray. And everyone said a big amen. amen. Put your hands together and you may be seated.
blessing it is to be here in Kolebu. I want to thank you for having me. And, um, I want to thank um, I want to thank Pastor Kofi for inviting me. It's always a blessing. Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 3. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. I will be sanctified with them that come nigh me. It's getting better. I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. What does the word sanctify mean? Somebody turn this speaker just a little bit. I think it will help. To be sanctified is to be differentiated. Is to be set apart. That's fine. That's fine. So, can you hear me at the back? Now, I'm preaching for a short time. I just want to talk to you a few minutes and then I'm out. Now, when, when you get saved, you come closer to God. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, uh, I am the way. Am I right? 14, 6. The truth and the life. No man comes to God except through me. Jesus Christ was the mediator between God and man. And Jesus Christ brings us closer to God. Now the scripture says, when you come to me, I separate you from where you were. There's going to be a difference between you and the rest of the world. That's what's supposed to happen to us. Now, I need somebody to have a mic. Pastor Isabel, I think if you sit on this side, you help me more. Now, Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Do you have a Bible? Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Leviticus chapter 10 verse 10. What does it say? And they, and that you may put difference between holy and unholy Mm -hmm. and between unclean and clean. So we read verse 3 and now we're reading verse 10. Now God says when you come close to me through Jesus Christ, I make you different. I I, I demarcate your, your position from the rest of the world. God says I want to make a difference between the holy and the unholy. Now, that's what doesn't happen in the church. Church members or Christians don't change. (laughs) Yeah. The people you chase to come to church three months ago are the same group of people you chase to come to church three months later. Those who struggle with fornication last year are those who struggle with fornication this year. So then the question is, where is the difference between the holy and the unholy? Those who were strongly against the church last year, they are strongly against the church this year. Now, but the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things have passed away. Behold, everything is new. Question, dear Christians, is everything new? The things you watch on your laptop at night, are they new? Or is the same old? Is that a new boyfriend or an old one? Remember when you used to not be a Christian and you just woke up, wear your clothes and go on with your day? But now that you're a Christian, is there any different? Is there a quiet time or you are still the same? Are you changing? You've been brought nigh, but is there a difference? Dion, change. Transform. I'm not the person I used to be even four months ago. No, I'm being changed. That's transformation. So today I want to talk to you about transformation. Transform, change. Now, I'm preaching for a short time. So you pay attention for a few minutes and then we close, okay? 
Are you with me? Yeah. How do you change? It's a big question. Which a lot of us don't like to face. How do I stop smoking? How do I stop drinking? How do I stop fornicating? How do I stop lying? How do I start having my quiet time? How do I start believing? How do I change? Christians don't change. Generally speaking, they don't change. When I was in secondary school, the first surprising thing to me was Rex Knight. Rex Knight, did you have Rex Knight in your schools? I don't know. Rex Knight is records night. When we get down. Now, at the time, we used to hear famous songs such as Pigaro 1, Pigaro 2, Pigaro 3, Pigaro 4. Did it? Was there a 5? Was the ends at 4? 5 and 6. Then what's next? The way she they do the dance hall. Pigaro. <laughs> yes. Pigaro 1, Pigaro 2. A S E M. What better? What better? What better? And they played a song, and we start dancing. These were the songs that were. Then we had a. Yeah, some who have been saved for a while, they don't understand. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the business of terror. I'm in the business of terror. I have a stack full of cash. Better grab an umbrella. I'll make it rain. I'll make it rain on them hoes. I'll make it rain on them. That's what we used to sing. Dancing, sweating. With girls, girls on boys, boys on girls. And we always had people who would run to where the electricity was and cut the electricity. And the room would be dark. I'll make it rain. <laughs> In the dark. Be sweating, grinding. Sometimes you'd be sandwiched, one girl in front, one girl behind. Now, That's a Saturday night. The next morning, we'll be at church at the Agri Chapel, Quajir Agri Chapel, just about 200 meters away from the assembly hall where we had a Rex night. The same brothers and the same sisters wearing cloth. Oh, you don't know the song. And we used to wear clothes. The same group. Yes, exactly how you are clapping. And then, Hallelujah! Hey. Hallelujah! Hey. And we wear the same the clothes. And the girls used to wear cover and slits. And the, Same group. Same. Just a few hours later. Same group. So Christianity in Ghana has morphed into a pseudo half worldly, half Christian existence where God and Satan can live together. Where Christ and the Antichrist can cohabit. Where there's no difference between the holy and the unholy. Where there's no difference between those who serve the Lord and those who serve him not. So before you realize, to become a Christian means to come to church. And people don't actually change. And they stay the same. That's why you have a girl telling you that she knows that she and her boyfriend stay together. But they are sorry now. And she's bringing him from the world into the church. It's called convert and take. As if the church is a forest bureau. You just bring your dollars and then by the time you come out, see this. 
and people are not changed inside. Now, don't worry, I'm closing soon. You know, as I grow older, I think I should have a child so that I'll really be a father. I feel old now. I think I have to finish up. Yes. You see, as I get older, I know how to make you stand. Give me two minutes, you all be shouting. But as I get older, and I analyzed my work as a full-time pastor for almost three years, and as a pastor for five years, and as a shepherd for almost ten years, I ask myself, the sermons that you've been clapping and jumping and shouting about, is it really changing you? And are you really being changed? Because I've given my life to give the word of God, which is able to save your souls. Yes. But is it really doing anything? Oh, you're not understanding what I'm saying. So now, as I'm here, my only determination is see if we can get some change inside of the Christians. Now, how do you change? There are three words for change in the Bible. Very easy. You see, the Bible was originally written in Greek. Not tree. The tree Bible was a later translation. But the first Bible was in Greek. And so when the word change is used, it's used three times. That usually causes confusion. But let's go through the three. By the time we are done with the three, we can close. Number one, metamorphoso. Metamorpho. Which is the Greek word. It is actually metamorpho, but it has an extra O, so I like saying metamorpho. It sounds powerful. The Greek word metamorpho is found in three different places. Number one, it's found in Romans chapter 12. Verse 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, I want you to all pay attention to me all because almost every Christian has the problem of how do I change? I, I've had it too many times. I, how do I stop? I want to stop masturbate. How do I stop? I want to stop fornicate. How, do, how, do, how can I like church? How many of you have wanted to like church, but it wasn't easy? Oh, raise your hand. You wanted to go, but it's not nice. <laughs> yes. I'm talking about transformation. But people are not changed. When I got saved, eh, I was changed. I was transformed. I stopped. I didn't. Music doesn't. Worldly music doesn't interest me. I was changed by the word of God. The power of God touched and changed me. So I noticed that Christians are full of a mix of two things and two worlds, and they are moving on and think everything is okay. But it's not okay. Now in verse two it says, "Be not conformed to this world, but be ye or be transformed or be changed." How? By the renewing of your mind. Which means if your mind is new, you'll be changed. And that word transformed is the word metamorphoso, which is the same as a worm changing into a butterfly. You're all science students, oh? This is very easy for you. A worm into a butterfly. When you get saved, you are a worm. But you are supposed to change into a butterfly that can fly away. Something totally different. You used to have, a, a, what do you call them? The legs, the legs of a worm is called what? You see, I'm not a fake sense today. Oh, I mean. You used to have them, now you have wings. Changed. Have you changed? How do you change? The scripture says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, change your mind and you will change. Now, the question is, Pastor Joshua, how do I change my mind? You see, a lot of theoretical things don't help us. Change your mind. Say, wow, amen. It doesn't, you haven't said anything. How do I change? Maybe that's how I say, change my mind. Now, if we jump to Ephesians 6, we see the armor of God. Number one, we have the helmet. Number two, we have the breastplate of righteousness. Number three, we have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Are you with me? Yes. This is my message. Or this is how it's going to be. So you better get used to it. 
Shoes short with the preparation of the gospel. Of all these things, which one is a weapon? Let's look at it again. There's a helmet of salvation. There's a breastplate. Of, is the helmet a weapon? It's defense, isn't it? Is a shield a weapon? It's what? Is breastplate a weapon? It's for what? Shoes. Are they a weapon? They are for what? So which one is a weapon? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Do you agree with me that the sword of the spirit is the only weapon in the armor? Do you agree? How many of you agree? The sword of the word of God, which is a sword, is the only weapon. Now the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not what? But which weapons? There's only one. So the only weapons we have are the word of God. So let's remove that word weapons and let's place word of God there. Do you agree? The word of God is not carnal. It's not, the Bible is not something you communicate through the flesh. No. The words of God are not something that can be sent. That's what the Bible says. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The word of God is different from words that I say. I can't just say John 3, 16, and God so loved the world. It's, that's just the letter. But there's something powerful and spiritual in it. So it says, the word of God is not carnal, but mighty. The word of God is very powerful. To the pulling down of strongholds. Now stay with me. Now, it goes on to say that the word of God captures every thought. I've gone into the mind now. And brings that thought to the obedience of God. The word of God catches your thoughts. This guy cried away. He's going, he will not close early. Catches that thought. The preaching catches it. Say, no, that's not obedient to the word. And brings it to obey God. Your mind. Reading the Bible. Being preaching the word. It catches thoughts. It catches thoughts. I hate my father. Hey! Obedience to the word of God. I won't come to church again. Obedience. The word of God. I'll sleep with her one last time. Hey. <laughs> Pastor Frank. So then before you realize, you don't have those thoughts anymore. To the word of God. And now your mind has changed. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Or be metamorphosized into a butterfly by your mind being renewed. But how will your mind be changed? The sword catches your thoughts and changes your mind. People who listen to preaching. So you see, that's why I say I've stopped shouting. Oh. Is it shouting you want I can preach you? you uh, oh, believe me. I'm telling you, I have the ass now. I have a, I can give you, you, you'll be sad, but it doesn't do much for you. That's why you keep coming to church and you don't change. So that's why the Bible says, rightly dividing the word of truth. That word divided, the word cut. Cut, slice, is the sword, and it captures the mind and changes the mind. Pastor Joshua, then by now I've changed because I've been listening to preaching. Ah, how many of you are thinking that in your mind? Today I'm answering all questions. How many of you are thinking, I've listened to preaching. Ah, even sometimes on the radio, I just allow the preaching to feel. So why is it that I'm not changing? Why is that my life? I'm talking about how to become, go from a worm to a butterfly. I'm, I'm, God is going to transform your life. Yes. Pay attention to me. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. Who is helping me? Yeah, read out. Let them hear you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He shall suffer loss. No, no, no. Second Corinthians Second. three fifteen. Sorry. Second Corinthians three fifteen. But even unto this day, uh-huh. when Moses is read, uh-huh. the veil is upon their hands. Let's learn a few lessons from this. Even till today, when Moses is read, what's Moses? Moses is the Old Testament. So in Jesus' time, the only scriptures they had were the Old Testament. So even till today, people are reading the scriptures. But where, what's happening? The veil is upon their hands. You know what the veil is? When you marry, that thing in front of your face, the bride, that's the veil. So when Pastor Ezra got married, he lifted the veil and opened it and saluted his wife. Yeah, that was when last year, 2017, uh, almost two years ago. Uh So that's the veil. 
Okay. So he says, up to today, when they read the scriptures, there's something called a veil. But notice, the veil doesn't cover the eyes, it covers the heart. Stay with me, oh. Stay with me. What I'm, what I'm showing you is it's, it's supernatural. The veil is covering the person's heart. So even though he's reading, the word, there's something covering the heart. It doesn't get there. Now, how do we get rid of the veil? Next verse. Nevertheless, uh-huh. when it shall turn to the Lord, mm-hmm. the veil shall be taken away. When we turn to the Lord, are you with me? Yes. So like, Pastor Joshua, the word is there. The word can change my mind, which will transform me. Why is the word not changing my mind? There is a veil. The veil is covering your heart, not even your eyes. You'd have thought to cover your eyes, but the veil is covering your heart. So when you read, it doesn't get there. What I'm teaching you is supernatural. I don't know whether it's the wrong church. I don't know whether I'm preaching to the wrong church. Now it says that when you turn to the Lord, that veil is going to be taken away. Now, Pastor Joshua, when you say turn to the Lord, if you haven't said anything, today no theory so. Everything is gone. Who is the Lord? Next verse. Now, the Lord is that spirit. The Lord Lord is the spirit. So when we say Lord, we mean Holy Spirit. So when you turn to the Holy Spirit, the veil is moved. The Holy Spirit is the teacher of the scriptures. So when the Holy Spirit is there, so whenever I read the Bible, I say, Lord, open my eyes. That's why I made you speak in tongues today. Holy Spirit, let them see. And cover their hearts. That's why we don't change over. So now, when we turn to the Holy Spirit, the Lord is the Spirit. When we turn, when you turn to the Holy Spirit to show you the scriptures, something supernatural happens. Jump. And we all, we all, with open faces. See, now we have open faces because the veil has been taken away. <laughs> and we are beholding what? The, glass, uh-huh, the, the glory. Of the so now, he's calling the Bible the glory of God. <laughs> the scriptures are the glory. When you look at the glory or you look at the scriptures without the veil, what happens? That spirit. word changes the word metamorphosis. That, that, that word changes. Metamorpho. You are changed. I'm different. I'm different from what I used to be. So I can see. People have it. People don't have, either you don't read the Bible or you don't have the Holy Spirit. Or both. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not who I used to be. Yes, the friends I used to have, I don't have them anymore. The places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. The desires I used to have, I don't go, I don't, I don't have them anymore. That's what the Bible says. Receive with meekness the engrafted. You know, you know that word engrafted, it means to plant. You see, like what I'm doing, I'm planting the word in your heart. I'm planting that the Bible will change your life. The Bible will transform you. The, a member is supposed to be transformed. Are you with me, my dear? Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah, pretend to be interested. My dear, hey, hey, pretend to be interested in what I'm saying. It's by force, yes. Receive with humility. A lot of people are not humble. Receive with humility. That's how you receive the word. With humility. What is God saying today? Receive with humility. They're implanted. Like I'm taking seeds and implanting them in you. Which is able to save your souls. What is your soul? Even your desires. That's why you keep bringing to us half-saved boys. Half-saved boys and half-saved girls to impress us that they came to church and they came to the altar to give their life to Christ. You want a saved bad boy. Like a mixture. Because your desires are, are warped. That's why you choose school over God. That's the biggest nonsense on earth. And this is coming from an educated man. Did you hear the biggest nonsense? You say that school is above God. It's the highest nonsense. Don't think that we don't think. Oh. Don't think don't. that that would be a mistake. Or that we don't reason. It's not that we don't think. It's that our thoughts are higher than yours. God said, my thoughts are higher than yours. It's not that we don't think. Just that ours is higher, so you don't understand. You actually don't get it. It doesn't click. Uh, our thoughts are higher. That's what God said. My thoughts are higher. A man of faith thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Now, it says, when we with open face look into the scriptures, we are changed. The Holy Spirit will teach you the scriptures and transform you. Transform. I can feel myself becoming a butterfly. But I'm not even the pastor I used to be last year. No. Last year, I did things differently. No. And it says we are changed from glory to glory. There's no end. 
this level of glory to this level of glory. I'm being transformed every day by looking into the glory. Glory to glory, glory to glory. Look, I was sharing with some people, I don't remember where I was. I was sharing with them that how I used to even think as a pastor. Last year, if you do something, you are out. Yeah, I'm afraid of you. You, you, you are just going please, I don't have, move the person out. I don't want to be near this person. I'll work with somebody else. I'll be okay. Well, that's how I was last year. You have three chances. One, two, three. Three strikes. Pat, you're out. This year, oh, your chances can't even finish. Oh, no, no, no. I'm changed. I'm changed. Why? I looked into the perfect law of liberty. I'm sorry. We haven't got there yet. Now, I looked into the law and I saw in Psalm 23. I'd never seen it before. But then, I don't know. That some mornings ago, last year somewhere, the veil was removed. And as I looked into the same Psalm 23, I was quoting at morning assembly. Suddenly I understood. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He led me to the green pastures. That's a shepherd. It's what I've been doing to my sheep. Green pastures of the word of God. Leading them beside the still waters. That's the Holy Spirit. I led them to only good places. Paths of righteousness. I told them what is righteousness. It's here. This is do the right things this way. And they were following me. It was beautiful. Then suddenly, yea, though I, that's where the leading ended. People think the shepherd led the sheep through the valley of the shadow. No. I, the sheep, I encouraged myself into the valley. That was my experience. Say, this way, this way. Then I realized when I turned back, after stage three, he followed me to paths, followed me to pastures, followed me to still waters. Then, pa, yea, though, yea, even though I, the sheep, of course, into the darkness. Then I learned as a pastor, do you say, okay, may the Lord reward him and continue? No. You turn. I am with him. Yeah, even though I change, I change. Now, now listen. Then what do I do? What do I do in the valley? What do I do in the valley? And number one, I provide solutions. That's the staff. The staff is what the sheep look at. They see the piece of stick. You know, we're supposed to follow that. And then the rod is what used to beat them. That's the correction. So I correct them with leadership. Okay, now that we are in the valley, number one, we have to fix electricity here. We can't be here. Number two, there's death around. We have to build a wall. That's the staff. Then I say, I say, foolish, why did you bring us here? This is a stupid thing you have done. This way. And I use it to comfort them. And before I realized, I never ended, intended to be in the valley of the shadow of death. But I'm setting a dining table in the midst of his problems. I have to set the table with plates and food. Which means I have to keep on preaching to the guy, even though the guy is in the midst of problems that I didn't create. And the, the very thing I told him not to do, that's exactly what he did. But I better keep preaching. I've been, set, I've been setting a table. And when there's no other option, he needs the Holy Spirit. So I anoint his head with oil. And even though he's in the valley of the valley of the shadow of death and surrounded by enemies, yet still God blesses him and his cup begins to run over. There's a blessing in adversity. And surely, goodness and mercy are not following him. The shepherd is following him. And the shepherd has two things. Goodness, mercy. Goodness, mercy. And what's the effect of that? You have members that will stay in church forever. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm not the pastor I used to be because I look into the word and I am changed. What about you? Oh, you people don't like my sermon. I'm making me feel like closing. Now, now, when the veil is taken away, we are changed. When the word is not there, there is no transformation. Pastors are supposed to feed. One day Jesus went to see his pastors. That's the third time the word change is used. It's a morphine. The Bible says, and Jesus was in the mountain, Mark 17. Mark or Matthew 17. And Jesus was talking to Moses and Elijah. Huh? Matthew 17, verse 2. Jesus was talking to Moses and Elijah. And the Bible says he was transfigured. That word transfigured his metamorph. He was changed. The Bible said they were talking with him. Talking with him. Talking with the pastors. Talking with the pastors. That's why we come and visit you. Paul said, Acts 20, verse 20. He said, I didn't hold back anything that was profitable to you, but I taught you publicly and from house to house. So, you are supposed to be transformed 
by the preaching from your pastors. The preaching. That's why we make you come to church. That's why we put you in a bus and send you halfway across the world. It's to be changed. It's to be changed, to be transformed. As you keep on coming, you keep on hearing, you are changed. The word of God changes people. Now, unfortunately, we have another type of change apart from the metamorphosis. Are you ready for it? Okay. If you don't like what I'm saying, I'm being, I'm, I'm being recorded all. Who's, who's recording? Good. So those who are listening will be blessed. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14. Verse 13 actually. Now the second type of change is metaschematizo. Metaschematizo. It's a type of change. Meta is to change. Morph is to change form. Schizo, schematizo is something else. I'll explain. Go on. For such as such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. These are deceitful people who transform themselves. That word transform. So you think that they've made themselves. No, that's not metamorpho. This is schematizo. They've made themselves like the apostles of Christ, but they are false. Next verse. It's different from Romans 12. Next verse. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That word once again is metaschematizo. Satan himself can make himself look like an angel. And we have devils in church who look like angels. Next. Therefore, it is no, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be accomplished to their works his ministers also it's not a shock that satan's agents can also change themselves and i see this in the church disguise the word metaschematizo means to change oneself or to disguise yourself you see one is be transformed and one is transform yourself so you got people in church some of them even bass they shout amen they shout mercy they sing in church but when you hear you just wonder Will you change? I go, I, 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 it was one of the, the people are not changing. I mean, last time you brought a similar story. You are bringing a similar story just a few weeks later. This keeps happening, Pastor. I can't stop doing this. I can't change this. I'm addicted to this. Why are you not changing? You see, there are desires. I want to be rich. I want to go to America. I want, to, and there's no spirituality attached. There's no call of God. There's no desire for God. There's nothing. And you keep on preaching. People are not changed, but they are still wearing the T-shirt, and they are still oh, they disguise themselves. They still come to church, but the person inside hasn't changed. I know why the church is quiet. I know. I'm just you. I'm talking to. I know who I'm talking to. Unchanged. Metaschematizo. Outward change, nothing in the inside. We have strong, strong babies. Strong babies. I like my I life, like my Let me continue with strength. Jude 1 20. <laughs> now, ye beloved, building up yourselves, that word is hypocodomia which is exercise by praying in the Holy Ghost. We have prayer warriors who have not changed. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4. He that speaketh and another tongue edifieth himself. That word edify is the same word or epokodomia. Exercise like you are bodybuilding. So you see you come big by your child. Prayers. You see children. Children. Yes, just like we have weak grown-ups. We have strong children, the spirit. They pray a lot. Only call all night, they come. But they fornicate. They are liars. They are thieves, disobedient, lazy. But pray. Have you ever, have you ever heard somebody pray in tongues saying, when you heard you reduce the volume of yours, because you than that? Let me stick to my mama, 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 mama. Yes. But they are not grown-ups. I explain myself. 
How do you grow? First Peter 2 2. It's new home babies. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. That's how you grow with the word. But you be a strong or whatever. Yeah, I'm teaching you no, line after line. I don't care if you don't like what I'm saying. Honestly, I, 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 I've preached here enough times. I've preached here enough times. I've healed the sick here. I've cast out devils here. I don't have to prove anything. I don't care anything. I don't care. I'm preaching my message to the end. Now, now, how do you know that somebody is a child? The word of God is not in him. But Joshua, what are the signs of a child? Very easy. First Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I thought, my thoughts were like a child's thinking. When I come to church, I don't like the church because nobody likes me there. And I feel lonely. I'm like, you are such a child. Sound like a child on the playground. You say you don't have friends. Do you think you got saved to have friends? You got saved to save you from a deep pit under the floor where there's fire, worms, and snakes, and Satan lives that you are you deserve to burn in forever. And you have not been saved, and you have been told that for as much as you see the day of Christ approaching, don't forsake the coming together of the brethren. That is why you are here. And you see, people, I, I don't want, I didn't, I stopped coming to that church because they pressure us too much. There's too much pressure. Such a child. Too much, they are pressurizing me to go to heaven. You are a fool. You are a fool. Fool. No, because you don't suck that boy who was pressurizing you to put his finger into your vagina. Go there. That one, you didn't tell your roommate that those boys, I don't know what's wrong with their finger. Every day it wants to be going there. That one, you didn't, you didn't complain about that one. But the one you're complaining about is the boy who is knocking and saying, the bus is ready. Have your bath and let's go to church. That one is a problem. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I thought. My thinking was like a child. So you see, a percentage leader, every day you have to wake up the same seven people. Iron for three, bath for two, and carry them into a bus. Because they are still thinking like a child. Number two, my reasoning, my reasoning, how I, how I analyzed this was like a child. Look how you analyze the church. How much do you give? Calculate your offering for the whole year. Let's assume you give 10 CDs a week, which you don't. <laughs> you give a total of 2 CDs, 50 pressure, but let's not talk about it. Let's assume you give 10. And let's even say you give for the whole year. 520 CDs. You can't pay for your busing for two weeks. A prophet sitting somewhere has organized transport to bring, because he came here, he has a heart for medical students. He says, bring them to come and listen to God's word. And you are, you are, your reasoning and your understanding is that now they are a cult. That is, it's nonsense. And got a lot of I said this when I finish, I'm going. You got a lot of professors and medical students, they are children. They get up and be talking about the church anyhow. I'm going, I don't live here, I don't care. Hello, yeah, come. Say, oh well, that church, and oh, why? Did you come here to go to school or you came here to go to church? What if you die in the year three? Have you not had people dying here? Could a professor come and save you with his teachers? And a lot of things say he's a child. He may have been in Methodist for 40 years. He's a child in the spirit. He's a child. I said it. When I finish my car, I say I spark and do for the food. He's a child. Preach. He talk that he's reasoning. How he understands things. Wouldn't you rather think that there are hundreds of students here? Do you know the level of fornication in this school? With HIV just next door to transfer. Do you know the abortions here? I'm sure you can even do it yourselves, medical student. You know what's going on in these halls and in these rooms? And you've got people who have come with the glorious light of the gospel, the great gospel to knock on doors. And your reason is that you didn't come here to learn or you came here. You are a fool. That's what you are. I said it. How, how, why do I know? The fool says in his heart there's no God. And you say, oh, but I didn't say there's no God. You said it in your heart. You said it in your heart. How do I know? The Bible says with the heart man believes. So your beliefs are what you are saying in your heart. So we can see from your beliefs. And you look. It hasn't made anybody less. My wife was here. My wife was in BQ or whatever you people call it. She was here. She has finished school. She finished school as a pastor and a doctor. It has, it has taken away nothing. Continue with your life and see where it ends up. It's not that we don't think. It's that our thoughts are higher. Remember it. You see, the prodigal son, the Bible says, when he came to himself, he came to himself. Sometimes you have to call yourself for a meeting. 
Christ to Christ. So let's think about what we are saying. Yeah, when, when that boy was telling you that he only put the tip inside, that one, you didn't go around complaining. You didn't. The lecturers don't come out and complain about your fornication. That, uh, you know, the fornication in the, the school is too much. I think we need, that one, they don't talk about it. You see that? The person's reasoning and the person's thinking is like a child. And number two, number three, they, I spoke like a child. You can read it, 13, 11, there are three. I thought, I reasoned, and I spoke. You see, the, the words that you even say, why are they worrying us? Those are the people, they've come here again. Those are, those are your wish people, the people of God. The peculiar people separated by the blood of Jesus, the priesthood, those who are going around. Don't you think he has lectures and he has exams to pass? Didn't you write an exam? You, recently he wrote exams. And he was asking, he has an exam just like you. So what has entered him that he is knocking? I'll tell you what has entered him. It's called metamorpho. You are changed. You can't stay the same. But you see, the word of God hasn't even affected people. Let me tell you what's in the verse. Say, hey, is he in the Bible? You, you see, you are a child. That's why you remain a child. Oh, I love, I love my preacher. I can't lie to you. That's why Paul said, Acts 20, Acts 20, 32. So I, I commit you to the word of grace, which is able to build you up. It's able to build. I commit, I, I, I commit. He was leaving. He said, you know, I've tried, but I can only go so far. I commit you to the word. I commit you to the word. The word will do it. The word will change you. The word will transform you. Look, when we turn to the spirit and the, the veil, the veil is removed. We are changed. We are changed. We are changed. I'm not what I used to be last year. I'm not what I used to be last month. The word of God is continuing. And, and what I love is that it's glory to glory. It's not glory to sorrow. No. My life is being made more glorious. My life is being changed. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. Happy. He's happy. Look at your sadness in your life. How many, how well, your heart comes I'm surprised there's some left. It has been broken now. Look at your life. Your hymen is lying in some classroom. I'm prophesying. I say your hymen is lying in a classroom somewhere on a table. It's lying there. It's lying there. I've been lying there. The next day when people came, they walked on. They didn't know that that's your hymen. You've left it there. By following your wisdom. Yes, but the Bible says in Psalm 19 verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Con- uh, making wise the simple. Making wise the stupid. I was stupid. The word of God made me wise. Yes, I used to, when I learn, I'll be 12th in class. When I learn, I'll be 12th or 11th. The word of God made me a wise. I graduated with the first class. The word of God changed my mind. Receive with meekness. Be humble when you hear the word of God. That's how you receive it, with meekness. Be humble. Be humble. Say, what's the word saying? What should we do? Let me not think I know. You, are, you know what annoys me? You see, on, especially on social media, see Christians also coming with arguments against the, 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 the word of God or pastors will be talking. Meanwhile, when was the last time you even had your quiet time? Like, when was the last time you even opened your Bible? You didn't even bring a Bible to school. You brought conflicts. You didn't bring a Bible. You don't even have a Bible. You'll now be going on Google. Give me a break. break. That's why you'll never change. That's why people can't work for God. There's no word. James 1.25 says, He that looks into the perfect law of liberty, listen up, and continues therein. Listen, continue doing what? Continue looking. Like when he looks, he looks again. And he looks again, and he looks again, and he looks again, and he looks again, and he looks again. He will not be a forgetful, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer. I thought it was the word, but it's the work. Ah. So, because he don't look at it. When you look at it, you start working for God. Oh, yes, they become and the, and, and, and it goes on saying, and that man shall be blessed in that deed, because the atmosphere of the word is the atmosphere for work. Say it, let me hear. It. The atmosphere is the atmosphere. For work. He created two lights in Genesis: a greater light for the day and a lesser light for the night. In the night, there's light outside. It's called the moon. It's a lesser light. It's a smaller light. And then the big one is for the daytime. Which is why Jesus said, I must do the work of him that sent me while, in other words, while there is a lot of light. In Genesis, to create the day, he made a big light. The word is a light. 
unto my feet. So when the word, the light from the word is a lot, you create an atmosphere of work. Yes. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Because the night comes, the night is the time nobody can work. What's night? Small light, Sunday service. You come, you go home. Once in a while, you hear it on the radio. Small, small, small light. You can't do much for God. You can't do much for God. That's why you struggle. Every day you say you'll do it. You can't do it. But if you continue to look therein, look therein, you become a doer of the work. Doer of the work. Oh, I, 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 I don't know. You'll be changed. You'll be changed. You'll be changed. You know, the Bible says, I'm closing with this. I'm sorry. I'm closing with this. The Bible says, Hebrews 4.12, you know it. The word of God is quick. It's quick. That word quick, I used to think it means speed. No doesn't mean speed. It means alive. Like the word quickened. Like you are the quickened who were once dead. Yes. The word of God is alive. I didn't understand this till one day. I was, asked, I was reading the scripture and I said to my wife, how can something be alive in you? See, I mean, that's how I go to bed. Oh. <laughs> the perfect law. I'm trying to understand the verse. And my wife said, oh, happens all the time. You have the plasmodium parasite. Oh my god. You have she said you have a plasmodium parasite. You have a tripa tripa that one. It can be inside you. And what else? So you can have organisms, bacteria, things living and working inside of you. And they affect your plasmodium. You sleep for three days. Taking a, 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 a what do you take? A, a test on it. Very good. That's the one I know. You take a test on it. Because the thing living inside of you has affected your whole body. You see, the word of God is truly alive. It's not, it's, not, it's not an inanimate object. It's alive in you. It's a living, living in the lamp. Thank you. And it's, and it's powerful. Sharper. So why would the word have to be sharp? Because it has to pierce even to the dividing. You see, this is the soul. This is the spirit. So you need something that can pierce, like even to the dividing. Why, Pastor Joshua? Because you need something to tell you that's the soul. Stop. That's the soul. This is the spirit. That's the soul. How that you can't tell? Yes. Is it the will of God or I'm in love? You can't tell. You can't tell. You can't tell. <laughs> so that's your desire. That's your soul. That's your soul. When I went to church, the way the pastor spoke to me, I didn't like it. I don't think chef, they should speak like that to people. They have to learn how to be more polite. I'm offended. I'm not coming. Hey, that's your soul. So the word of God divides it. This is your thinking. This is the spirit. The dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It's on the word of God. Peace. And it's a discerner or an understander of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God will tell you that this was in your heart. This was in your mind. Stop. Your heart is not... One day God told me, your heart is wrong. Your heart is not, your, it's not... Your motives are wrong. Your motive is wrong. For doing this thing, your motive is wrong. The center of thoughts and intents of the heart. God will change you. That's why, people, that's why Christians today don't change. Because the past, you go to church, the pastors are preaching lesser lights. They're preaching about receive it. You are blessed. God is about to break through. God is turning your life around. God is changing it for you. Though weeping may endure for that. It's a, it's a light. It's a light. It's a lesser light. 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 There is a great light that many are called. There is a great light that you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That, that atmosphere, it makes people work. It's a greater sermon that hey, you are blessed. Receive. I see four people receiving a car. Somebody is walking here today. But by next year, by this time, God is going to turn it around. Receive in the name of Jesus. It's a light. It's a light, but it's a lesser light. You can't work with it, no. You can't work with it. So he intentionally created great ones for daytime. He pronomos sabiada labandos. The word. The word. I, 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 I have to stop at the point. I can continue. I will never end. David said, I rejoice at thy word like a man who has found great spoil. I read it today. Treasure. When I'm reading the Bible, I see something. I just start laughing. My God, what is this? 
What is this? Look, God's words are not like our words. So. God, God told Moses, tell the rock to bring water. You see? Do you think it's English? Do you think it's English the man is speaking? When he said in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, say to the mountain, move. Do you think it's English we used to do that? No. These are the words that no man's wisdom teaches, but the words that the Holy Spirit teaches. I don't want to change the message to go into something else. God wants to change your life. Oh. Don't come to church every day and go home the same. Don't live a life serving God and die and find out that you never changed. And God never. Don't say that God's word is not powerful. God's word is quick and powerful. Don't say God cannot do anything. God cannot change. No, God says my word not like a hammer to break down. No matter how strong that thing is in your life, the word of God will break it into pieces. Take it from me. Take it from me. The word of God will change you. The word of God will change you. Preaching will change you. Look, that's why coming to church is good. Oh. You see, as I'm preaching, I'm breaking down strongholds. I'm changing your thoughts. I'm changing your opinions. I'm speaking to your mind. And what am I using? If I use my English, nothing will happen. Nothing will change. But he that is of God heareth the words of God. You hear the word of God. And when the word of God comes, it's like a fire. Is my word not like a fire? Is it not like a hammer? Is my word not like a sword? The, thy word is a light. Say, I have a day, I've ordained a lamp for mine anointed. What's that lamp? Thy word is a lamp. God has given a lamp to his anointed to guide you. Many times the word will tell me, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Recently I read, be kind-hearted to one another, forgiving one another. I was so blessed. Forgive, forgive. Forgive, let it go. Forgive. Forgive one another to guide you. Look at your life. One day Jesus said, he wrote on the floor, let him that's without sin cast the first stone. Everybody went home. Won't you go home? Go home. <laughs> when everybody got home, then she said, have all, he said, have all your accusers left. She said, everybody has gone. He said, neither do I accuse you. Go home and sin no more. Then he turned to his disciples and said, do you see what I just did? I'm the light of the world. Anybody who follows this thing will never live in darkness. Unforgiveness is darkness, loneliness, isolation. That's where it comes from. You're holding on. Your stepmother, your mother, your auntie, that thing your father did. Your father has never been here. Your father has left you the word to tell you. Be kind-hearted to one another. Forgive me. It is a light. If you follow it, you'll never live in darkness. Ah, that was the true light that has lighted the world. It's up to you to believe it. But a transformation comes when you realize that these are no words. They are the word of God. Those are the stages in your Christianity. Number one, in the beginning, it's just the word. In the beginning was the word. Number two, when some people come to church for a while, they say that the word was with God. Like the word is associated with God in a way. And you know that it's somehow holy. But they question it a bit. But on the third stage, you see the word is actually God. The word is God. And if you want to take a little higher, you jump to verse 5 and say the word became flesh. That's when the word affects you. That's why it's living inside of you and works amongst me. You see, that is Matthew 6.33 walking down the road. He's living it. He's living the word. Serious. The word will change you. The word will change you. The word will change you. I'm so, I'm, I'm so, I'm so. You see, when I go to church Sunday morning now, I don't even like preaching the second service. I prefer to preach the first service. Because the second service, you know, you know how it is. The special day. But the first service, I can see my members. I can see these people, they have to change. And here I am. And I look at Acts 20, 28. Take heed to yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you an overseer. Feed the church of God. Feed them. Give them food. I just, I can feel it. I'm feeding. They'll change. You think, you... I do not, I do not, you take some First Peter 2, you take some First John 3, you just take a little Habakkuk, take a little Nehemiah, you transform. Come to church oh, to hear this. Because all through your life, you hear the words which man's wisdom teaches. And the Bible says they come to naught. Your biology will come to nothing. Your anatomy will come to... Look at, ana, look, look at anatomy. If anatomy was a perfect subject or a perfect study, then there will be no pathology. The fact that there is pathology shows you that anatomy is not working. Mm. As students, don't worry. I did science in secondary school. We're on it. <laughs> Yes. You learn and learn and learn. You see that you see, you will learn and come and finish. You'll be a doctor at 28. You'll be looking for a husband. You'll be surprised. Yes. 
But if you had read the word, the word would have told you, enjoy with the wife of your youth. So you'll be making plans to marry now. I know. Frank, the word is everything. The word is everything. The word is everything. I've ordained a lamp for mine anointed. So as I close, you know, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 4, 5, it says, this, these commandments and statutes which I command you this day, they shall be your wisdom in the sight of the nations of this world. The world must see our wisdom. This girl is different. You see, as you've come to church today, remember, remember Romans 12, 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Pastor Joshua has a lot of big English. You will change if you change your mind. You will change. So whenever, when you, as you've come, what have you changed your mind about? What has changed from today's preachers? What's the point of coming here every day to hear the word of God? The word of God has to change you. What is changing today? You've heard a lot of things. What is changing? What's the decision? What's the point? I believe God is changing you. Amen. I believe God is transforming you. I believe God is healing you. Amen. You know the soul can be sick. You see, Pastor Isaac. If I'm standing on the road, God forbid, I won't use me. A man standing on the road and a, a big a pickup is coming, driving at 120 kilometers an hour and swipes him off the road. What has happened to him? And he lives. What's likely? He'll be, ah, you are doctors. He'll be what? When he comes for a miracle service, we'll all be hoping that what? And what will happen when he's healed? Until then, he's not normal, isn't it? Pastor Ajiman, some girls were standing on the road. And a boyfriend came and hit him. Her soul is crippled. She's not how she used to be. That's why Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. There is healing for the broken heart. Heal my soul, oh God. So the psalmist, heal my soul. Because I'm affected. I can't trust men. Have you heard that one before? It's a cripple. I don't fear woman live long. It's paralyzed. It's what he has one eye. He has one eye. Uh, what I'm saying is not true. Yes. I can't see. My mother, my father threw my mother out. Me and my mother. And he ran away and never came back. I hate my father. I hate all authority figures. I can't relate with anybody who tries to be over me. I have to make my own decisions. You, you can't rely on anybody. It's a, you are not normal. You're in your soul, you are like this. But to receive, receive the word of God engrafted, like planted like seeds which is able to save your soul that word save is sozo, it's healing everything, so make whole make whole, so you see when you come and you hear the preacher, you say no I, 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 I see now I see now I can trust a woman I can trust a man, I can marry, I can live I can submit to my father, I can submit to her, I know what he did but I can still submit you have been made normal again God wants to save your soul. Receive with meekness the engrafted word. The parable is this. The seed is the word. That's the confusing part. That's the parable. The parable is a confusing story. The parable is this. The seed is the word. That's what's confusing. It's an investment. Every morning I throw seeds onto my soil. Yeah. You wait for the harvest. Every day I just throw. The word is an investment. The word is a hammer. The word is a fire. The word is quick and powerful. The word is a light. The word is everything. I sent my word and I healed them. I sent it. I couldn't come. I sent the word. I couldn't come. I sent the word to go and heal them. God is changing you by his word. Father, I thank you. Thou hast hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them unto babes. I don't want to go to hell. I want to be sure. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Raise your right hand high above your head. 
high above your head. Good. I see the hands lifted. You've done. You lifted your hands. Do one more thing for me. Come right here to me at the front. I want to pray for you. repeat as well say heavenly father i come to you today just as i am lord i know i'm a sinner have mercy on me write my name in the book of life one day i'm going to heaven to be with you satan i'll no longer save you from today i'm born again from today i'm saved thank you lord for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wow, what a blessing. Who's taking a